Hey guys, the Game Boy Advance, finally, 10 hidden gems on the JRPG genre for this little guy here. So um, I wasn't really deep into the Game Boy Advance actually until a few weeks ago when I started planning this video and playing all of the marvelous hidden gems it has. Years ago, decades ago, I had only played the Fire Emblem titles, the Golden Sun titles, maybe one of the hidden gems I'm about to talk about, but not that much. I was like literally on the surface of the Game Boy Advance and I was so glad to make this video because I got to know so many great games, so many good games that I didn't know and I am so glad to know them now. So I hope to pass on this knowledge to you so you can get to know these hidden gems, these other 10 JRPGs a little better. Let's begin! Number 10, Lufia, The Ruins of Lore According to the developers of this game, Lufia, The Ruins of Lore is a Gaiden title. That means it's sort of like a spin-off or side story to the original trilogy. It is nevertheless based on the same universe and with several equal gameplay mechanics to the previous titles. It's still a turn-based RPG in which you fight alongside your allies and some of the monsters you recruit. I know this game is not that hidden, but since I've always considered the Lufia series an underrated franchise, I thought I'd put this one at number 10, because in my opinion, it's a pretty decent game. It was also the last Lufia to be released outside Japan, and the last one for a console system before the remake of Lufia 2 for the Nintendo DS, or reboot as a matter of fact. In any case, this one's a solid JRPG that may not be as good as Lufia 2, for example, but it definitely deserves a chance. Number 9, Tactics Ogre the Knight of Lotus. Yes, the same guy who's previously expressed he doesn't like Tactics Ogre for the PSP is now recommending Tactics Ogre for the Game Boy Advance. Well, first of all, they're different games and the gameplay mechanics, even though obviously similar, are not the same. I have no idea why I did like this one, I've given the PSP title several tries and not a single one has been able to convince me. None. However, when I found out there was a Tactics Ogre for the Game Boy Advance a little while ago before making this video, I decided I would give it a chance just to see if it was any different than the other. Maybe it was a little bit easier than the PSP one, or maybe the gameplay was more friendly or the complexity was less, I don't know. The thing is, I am currently enjoying this game and I thought I'd share it on the list since the whole franchise is pretty underrated to start with. And considering most attention went to the PSP title, I thought I would praise the GVA one for those who haven't played it or didn't even know it existed, like me. Number 8. Demi Kids. Demi Kids light and dark versions were sort of like a response to the Pokemon franchise with their own twin titles. However, it was terribly done. I mean, the games are great, totally recommended, but I think their attempt to make this game reach kids the same way Pokemon did was outrageous to say the least. They are both turn-based RPGs with monster collecting features, part of a series of Shin Megami Tensei spin-offs called Devil Children. In the light version, you play as a character accompanied by his friend and a mysterious girl to a world called Valhalla, which is totally different from the dark version. My point is, how will America market these games to kids? The protagonists are half demon, half human, and in the dark version, you're supposed to go with Lucifer to ask him for help! To prevent the end of the world! Nevertheless, these two Game Boy Advance twins made their way across the sea and landed into our territories, while the rest of the franchise, which began in the Game Boy Color, never did. And so on to number 7 will be the dark version. Leaving all the controversy aside, let's talk about the games themselves. The one I played for the most part was the dark version. I'd like to begin saying that these games are more deep and more solid than any Pokemon title, story-wise. There's this girl who appears out of nowhere and tells the two main characters who have found a strange book in the library that she comes from Valhalla, 
to stop the end of the world. It sounds silly and generic, but since it was allegedly intended for kids, it was actually okay. So, not that bad. The battle mechanics are identical in both versions. They're turn-based RPGs in a first-person view. You are given a few demons at the beginning of the game, and as you progress, you always get the option to recruit them to have them fight for you. The music is awesome. I really praise the soundtrack in this game. And the graphics look more than okay for a game of its era. So overall, both versions are great hidden gems that, even if you're not into Pokemon like me, you'll probably like them either way. Next is Sima, the enemy. Here is an action RPG and a very strange one indeed. You take control of a character that works for an organization in charge of destroying the Sima, which are mysterious beings that kidnap the characters into the Sima gates. The game starts with a really interesting and original plot. And as soon as you're free to control your character, you realize you're inside a train with multiple NPCs. Ah, but they aren't just NPCs. They are actually somewhat playable throughout the entire game. Your goal is to help them move from point A to point B, while you and your useless ally, seriously the AI in this game is very mediocre, take care of the monsters. However, not all missions are like this. Almost every single one of them requires the use of one of your other characters to activate switches or to use their abilities to do a certain task, because each, because each one of them has a unique skill. I will definitely recommend checking this game out. It's pretty good, pretty weird, and really original. Number 5. Riviera, The Promised Land Riviera is a turn-based RPG with an isometric view and a story that's quite weird also, but a little cliché and silly. It has sort of like a Disgaea feeling to it, even though they're far from being related. I say this because here you control a Grim Angel who's trying to seal four fountains of evil, also fighting other Grim Angels on the way. There's four heroines on this journey, giving the, the game a small dating scene mechanic to achieve the multiple endings it offers. There is also a port for the PSP with some differences, including full voice acting, but to be honest, they're almost identical. Either version is fine and recommended. I just wanted to show you that the original was one was first released on the Game Boy Advance. Onimusha Tactics. Yeah. You heard that right. There's an RPG, a strategy one actually, for the Game Boy Advance that's based on the Onimusha series for the PS2. It's a spin-off, of course, but the fact that it was released for the Nintendo instead of a Sonic console like the PSP beats me. However, the reason for being hidden could be very well that, and because it was indeed a spin-off with a gameplay entirely different from the famous Hack and Slash franchise. The thing is, Onimusha Tactics is exactly what it is, a tactical RPG in which you move in squares, select your actions and all those details almost identical to Final Fantasy Tactics. It has its own original features, of course, but it definitely feels highly influenced by those kinds of games. In any case, you won't believe this, but it is actually a very solid game. Not a masterpiece in any way, but still really good and likable. You think the story will be bad for a spin-off, but nope, it was actually decent enough. So this is an RPG that I strongly recommend. Number 3. Summon Knight Swordcraft Story Summon Knight began as a series of strategy RPGs for the PlayStation 1. But very oddly enough, only three spin-offs have been localized outside Japan. And they're not strategy RPGs anymore. They're action RPGs with crafting elements, at least the two Game Boy Advance titles. And to be honest with you, they're awesome! They might look dull and simple, but trust me, they have a certain charm to them, especially the first one, with some very addicting structures that keep you playing them for hours. The battle system is a 2D hack and slash, which reminds me of the early Tales of games. You don't have any party members during combat, other than your summoned creature who helps you in your journey. You can also choose between a male or female protagonist, but as far as I'm concerned, the story and the events are technically the same. 
Now, since the first game took place on number 3, well, it's obviously that its sequel will be the second one on my list. So, the second one is Summon Knight Swordcraft Story 2. The gameplay mechanics are almost identical in both games. Here, you also choose between male and female protagonists. You have the crafting system, the 2D action battle system, etc. One thing that stood out for both games were the fact that you get to choose at the beginning your summon creature. In the first game, it's between a robot and a stuffed animal, but in the second one, it's now between four types of creatures. The story doesn't change at all whichever you choose, but the scenes and dialogues obviously do, since the creatures are a big part of the main plot. Both games, however, feel like comedies more than anything else. Those kinds of stories mainly for younger audiences with all the classic teachings of growing up to an adult. Needless to say then, I highly recommend both games since they are among the best of my entire list. Really, they are totally awesome. There was actually a third part of the spin-off series, but it was never released outside Japan. You can nowadays play it in an English patch, but though, but that's something that I haven't done personally. Finally, number one, Yggdra Union. I think it has been twice that I've covered this game in previous videos, most recently in the last JRPG for every Nintendo console. This strategy RPG came out in North America in November 2006, meaning it was the last JRPG to be released for the Game Boy Advance. It was also ported two years later for the PSP. Both versions are as good as the other, but this time I do recommend playing the PSP one mainly for visuals. Now, Ydra Union is not exactly your cra classic strategy RPG, moving in squares and attacking your enemies. Here, each of the main characters have their own armies, divided into small platoons that battle against their enemies in the same fashion. I'm not going to go into all the complexity and details for, its, for time reasons, but I'd like to stress out one more time that this game is awesome and that it's one of that I would recommend to all those looking for something different and original within the strategy genre. I love this game. Okay guys, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. And guess what? I didn't know this before and I was sure it wasn't gonna be like this, but there's going to be a top 10 most unknown JRPGs for the Game Boy Advance. Yes! So look forward to it because I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for watching again. See you next time.